Hello, my name is Eisermann. I want to show you how to set up this Archive MIDI Mix to the Deluge. I have set up something already, so uh, let me just show you what I did here. Set up on six channels. I'm here in my kit. The first two sounds, the kick itself and the rumble, tom sound, whatever, are on this fader. So all the other faders are turned down. So when I press play, that's all you hear. And on this control, I have the high pass for the kick. And I can make it kind of disappear if I want to. Uh, the same on this control for the toms. High pass. So can I, I can play them separately without even touching these knobs to mute them. I can still do that, of course, but sometimes, yeah, I want to be just here and do stuff and I don't want to go here. So yeah, how do I do that? It's super easy. Select the track in the kit you want to control and I do it this way. I control the master volume. That makes a lot of sense because maybe I have something set up here with two different levels, maybe some noise. Why I'm saying this uh, is because the default setting in the Deluge is that the master volume is on 40. And I switched it around, I set the master to 50 and this one to 40. If I only have one sound. Yeah. I hope you get the point. <laughs> so now I want to control the master volume. You can see when I move the fader, it's already set up. Let me quickly unlearn this by pressing shift and learn. So now all connections to this parameter are gone. So be careful with that. The next step is to press learn, move the fader. And that's it. Same goes for this sound. Let me use, uh, go to master here. Okay. And now I'm going to press learn, move the fader. And there's my control. It's that simple.
Okay, now we have set up the master volume control for these two sounds within the kit. Uh, now I want to make use of these knobs. I want to control the high pass filter for the kick with this and the high pass filter for the toms with this. And I also want to control the delay amount with this control for the toms. What I'm going to do is go to the kick track, select my high pass filter. Yep. I'm on the right place and then I press learn, move the knob and I'm done. Same thing for this sound, high pass filter. It's already set up, so yeah. Then I go to the delay amount, which is here. And let me unlearn it. Press learn again, move this knob, and now I have the delay amount. You have to remember that if I go to like 50%, like noon on this fader, it's like, you can see it all also here. And when I go to half, it will like uh, repeat kind of forever. And if I go above noon or 50%, it's going to increase in volume. So be careful with that. Now let's listen to it. High pass filter for the toms. High pass filter for the kick. for the toms and volume for both sounds. Okay, let's move on to the next two sounds, which are the hi-hats. I have this one and that one. But let me just start with this one because it's there's not much to it. Uh, the first one is there's no control. The second one Ah, this row is for reverb and delay settings. The lower row is for high pass, low pass, bit crush. So all things that do some filter like stuff. And the upper row is for specific effects that depend more on the sound than the other one. So that's my hi-hat one. I have a, f a delay set up for this one. So together with the kick, it sounds like this. So turn this off. So I can kind of make it roll. And on the other sound, on the same control, I have a reverb. So that's really cool. I have one control for two different effects. I have also for this sample a bit crusher, but it doesn't affect the other sound. So that's a cool way to get some separation. Another very nice, th or, uh, something that I like a lot is I have the, the pitch set up on this one just for this sample, not for the other one. And I have set the pitch speed to independent. Normally the default setting is link. So when I lower the pitch, the sample gets longer. If I increase the pitch, it gets shorter. Yeah, until it does some crazy stuff. But it gets really long and I don't like it because it gets in the way of the other sounds and I don't want that. So I set it to independent and now it keeps the length on the low end, on the low pitch, and it increases the length. And I really love that sound together with a reverb. You can get some nice 
textures stuff. Yeah, and in the noon position, it's about the original sample pitch. One thing that I've noticed uh, when I set up the pitch, I, I'm using the transpose for this one. Go to transpose. Normally, when you pitch it up or down, you see the numbers changing. For some reason, I don't know why, um, it doesn't show the value changing when I use this knob. Let me press learn and use the pitch knob or the, the knob for the pitch. And as you can see, it stops blinking when I move the knob, but it doesn't show the number. Although it does what I'm expecting. Yeah, that's something I discovered. On the next channel, I have the snare. Let me just show you how it looks. That's the waveform. So it's, yeah, multiple hits. And the same with this one, it uh, has a slightly different sound. But these are my two snares. And they both have a high pass. And they both have a delay. But this sound has kind of a 16th delay. And this one has an 8th delay. The upper control is not uh, used right now. And the next channel are my two right sounds. That's the default setting. This right and that right. And the biggest thing I think is this control. I can shorten the sample and make it longer. That applies for both. This is really short. That's still pretty short. So if they run together with the kick, let's say. I can do stuff like that. How did I do this? I'm controlling the decay on the first sample. Ah, by the way, the, the other parameters are all on zero. Uh, attack, sustain and release on this one. And on the other sample, I have attack on zero decay on one or how long I want it to be the shortest. Let me shorten it again. So I can say, okay, I want this to be the shortest. Then I set my decay like that. And the sustain has to be on, on zero. If I turn this up, it goes up to 50, of course. That's by the way, my speaker that turns off when it doesn't get a signal. Okay, so this the shortest, when the sustain is on zero, the decay says how the shortest sound will be. And I want to be it on one. I have a reverb on this one. I have no reverb on this sound though. Yep, that's just the dry sound. But I have a bit crusher on the first one. And that's what I really love. I can do really nice percussive things. The 
simple as that. Okay, let's move on to the next channel. It's this one and I have this synth on it. Let me just show you, yeah, it's on. It's just the synth on this channel. And I have two controls used. It's the delay. And, like I said, the lower row is for f f low pass, high pass filter stuff. So, yeah, the bit crush. And in this case, it's because I have an FM synth. I don't have the, I can show you, I don't have the low pass filter. It's not possible to use it. But since it's